life. What a mess. Mess on whose part? Surely we can't rightly charge God with the mess. For scripture says God made man upright. Well then, the mess must be ours. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Their ways are corrupt. Violence, pain, drunkenness, divorce, abuse, godlessness, emptiness, no restraint, no vision, no direction, no purpose, no joy, no hope, suicide. Yes, we are suffering the consequences of a godless generation. Scripture says it is not in man to direct his own steps. Jesus said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have a better way of living. From death to life. I suppose that there are many impossible things in life. But when you think about it, humanly speaking, Bringing the dead back to life is the most important and impossible thing to do. Nothing else is as impossible. The Bible tells us of numerous people who were brought back from death to life. In 1 Kings chapter 17... The Bible tells us of the prophet Elijah. Through the power of God and through sincere, deep prayer, he raised the dead to life. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 4 that the prophet Elisha, that's the successor of Elijah, Elisha, through the power of God and through deep, sincere prayer, the Bible tells us he raised a woman's son to life. The little boy went with his father in the forest in the hot, hot sun one day, and all of a sudden he screamed out, My head, my head, it hurts. Apparently he had a heat stroke. And the little boy fell and died. They sent for the prophet. The prophet prayed. And through the power of God, he was brought back to life again. In 2 Kings 13, Elisha, who was now dead and was buried in his cave. The Bible says one day in war, there was casualty and out of hurry, they threw one of the dead soldiers' body into Elisha's tomb. And when the dead body hit Elisha's bone, the dead man sprang right up back to life again. In Luke chapter 7, the Bible tells us that Jesus raised a dead boy to life. In Luke chapter 8, it tells us that Jesus raised a dead girl back to life. In John chapter 11, an incredible story of Lazarus who was dead four days. Do you know what happens in four days after someone dies? Their skin, tissues, sinews, everything on their body starts to decay, starts to melt away. And the Bible says Jesus went to that body that was now decayed and dead for four days. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. In Matthew chapter 27, Jesus, at his resurrection, when he came out of the tomb, the Bible said, Hundreds of dead people, but get this, they had been dead for a long time. The Bible says when Jesus rose from the dead, the dead 
people, righteous dead, came out of their tombs and went back to the homes of their families. In Acts chapter 9, Peter raised a woman from the dead. And then in Acts chapter 20, the Bible tells us Paul the apostle raised a man from the dead. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. If God can raise even the dead back to life, he can stop the dying from death, referring to sickness. Whatever sickness, whatever disease, if God can raise the already dead to life, he certainly can raise a person from sickness before they die. And certainly he can fix all of our unwanted situations and circumstances. Such was the case with King Hezekiah. Let's listen carefully. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 1 says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. In other words, he was so badly off. His sickness was so terminal that it was obvious he was going to die. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Could you imagine how final those words must have sound? He is already sick in bed, terminal, terminally sick, hoping that he would not die. And the prophet came along and said, you will die. Put your house in order before you die. Have you ever wondered what are some of the thoughts within a person on their sick bed, knowing that the doctor gave them up and there's no hope? Well, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah gives us a glimpse of some of the thoughts that might be running through a person's mind and thoughts in sickness and near death. Here is what King Hezekiah was saying on his sick bed. I said, in the prime of my life, he was only 39 years old. Must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? After all, most people believe they will live until they're old. 39 year old. Knowing he was being robbed of life. Verse 11, I said, Never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. I could just imagine the tears falling down his eyes. I'll die. My future has been cut short. And then in verse 12, my life has been cut short. Suddenly, my life was over. Take note of the word suddenly. Because that, that's how death comes. That's how sickness comes. One day, we're quite healthy. As a matter of fact, some of us will even boast. I am healthy. And overnight, sickness comes on the body. He said, in other words, he was saying, this sickness... This death that's coming my way, I did not expect it. I'm young. I'm healthy. I'm rich. I'm a ruler. I have friends. And now look where I am. He says, I was torn apart. 
as though by lions. Verse 2 and 3. Here's what Hezekiah said. When Hezekiah heard this, this what? You're going to die. You won't recover. Put your house in order. He turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. When doctors give you that bad report, there's still prayer. When you feel like you won't make it, there's still prayer. When your day is going seriously bad, there's still prayer. Hezekiah, when he heard the report, he prayed to the Lord. The Bible said, he says, Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you. On death's bed, it is so good to have a good track record knowing that you have lived for God. He says, Lord, check my track record. I've lived for you. I've been faithful to you. And do you know he wasn't lying? He was one of the best kings apart from King David that Israel ever had. And so he told God, God, I'm young. I've been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Verse 4 and verse 5. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says, I have heard your prayer. Do you know how many people in different religions pray to their God and they never hear the answer to their prayer? You and I serve the living God through Jesus Christ. God answers prayers. I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears. And I will add 15 years to your life. What an amazing Bible account. God didn't even have to give him a sign. Apparently he didn't recover instantly. But God gave him a sign so that he could be comforted to know that he would recover. And here is what it says. This is the sign the Lord from the Lord to prove that he will do as he has promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backward ten steps. This miracle possibly involved the reversing of the earth's rotation. You don't know how big a miracle that is. Because if the earth's rotation is reversed, it will affect the air, it will affect the ocean, it will affect life on earth, it will affect everything. Yet, God reversed the earth's rotation and caused Hezekiah to be healed without affecting anything on earth. However, God did it. He stopped Death and sickness, physical sickness, and gave Hezekiah 15 more years of life on earth. Nobody can do that but God. Nobody can do that but our God. That our God is our heavenly Father. He still does miracles. Now let's cue in. Let's focus in, focus in on some of the things that happen quickly in this account concerning Hezekiah. It teaches us many things. Number one, death can come unexpectedly at any time. So I want to ask you, are you living like you're going to live 10 years from now? 
Are you living like you're going to live 50 years from now? Death can come to us even when we leave the church. It can come to us tonight. Hezekiah would never have believed that until suddenly death was at his door. Death can come and unexpectedly. The Bible tells us we should expect to live for 70 years or by strength, 80 years. However, God is sovereign. God takes us home, us home when He is ready for us. I want to remind everybody here death can come unexpectedly. At any time. Secondly. The need to keep our house in order. Think about this. Should you die tonight. Is your house in order? How many people would be terribly negatively affected by your death? For some of us. One of the biggest impact. We would leave our family in financial debt. We would leave our family paying big money after we have died. The need to keep our house in order. If you have a wife, love her now. If you have a husband, love him now. If you have children, love them now. Don't wait until you're on the sick bed and about to die. Keep your house in in order. Don't do tomorrow what you can do today. Keep your house in order so that whenever the Lord calls you home, you'll go with ease and your family will not be burdened. Three, the need to live right before God. Hezekiah said to God, Lord, you know that I have lived for you with all of my heart. I have been faithful to you. How many of us can say that today? How many of us can truly say to God, God, I seek you every day. I put you first in my decisions and my choices. We need, not tomorrow, today, to start to live right before God. Don't wait until trouble comes to read your Bible. Read it now. Don't wait for trouble to come to praise the Lord. Praise Him now. Don't wait for trouble to come to pray to God. Pray to God now. Don't wait until things get dire in our life for us to become faithful to God. Become faithful to God now. Live for God now. Be right before God now. Fourthly, that God still mercifully works miracles. You know, even though Hezekiah said to God, I've been faithful to you all my years. At the point he was on his sick bed, he wasn't so faithful to God. Pride consumed his heart. He did a few stuff that he should never have done. However, God still gave him a healing miracle. We learn from Hezekiah that God still mercifully works miracles. Even when we don't deserve it, God loves us so much that he wants to work a miracle for us. In whatever area of our life we may need it. Fifthly, that God always keeps his promise. God said to Hezekiah, I'm going to give you a sign to prove to you that I'm not lying to you. God didn't have to do that. God gave him his word and that should have been enough. But God loved him and cared about him and said, Hezekiah, I want to give you this sign. Now, now think about this with me. He was on his deathbed beside his window looking out towards the stair that went up to the second floor and he saw when God made the shadow the sun's shadow go back 15 steps he couldn't move on his bed 
But with his head turned out to the window, he saw that God fulfilled his promise. Brothers and sisters, when you read the Bible and you see in there that God promises you something, I want to remind you that God keeps his promise. God does not fail. God is faithful. If God promises us something, he will come through. Doesn't matter how it looks. God is faithful to his promise. And lastly, we learn that God can change our present situations no matter how ugly and life-threatening it may be. He was literally dying. Nobody could bring him back to life. Nobody could keep him from dying. But yet, as I opened this message today, I showed you cover to cover from the Bible how many people were raised from the dead. They were already dead. And God brought them back to life. So really, it wasn't anything for God to stop death from coming to Hezekiah. And I want to tell you today that no matter what sickness you have on your body, and even if it's getting worse, I want you to know that if God raises the already dead, God still heals the sick. God still changes our circumstances. In last week's message, I spoke to you about having firm faith. And here we are today with proof from the Bible that God can do all things. How do we tap in to the power and the promises of God? Simple. Take it for what it is. God is God. All things are possible with God. John chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 said, God sent his son Jesus into the world right here where we're living. It says there is no judgment against anyone who believes in Jesus. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. People that are living in sin are dead. Dead to God. Dead to heaven. But yet God can bring a sin sick soul to new life as they repent and they give Jesus their sins. He raises the physically dead and he raises the spiritually dead. 